and cross cultural leadership and management presently he is serving as ceo khaibur pakhtunkhwa provincial board of investment and trade sir thank you very much for joining us today now i would request director general neema for welcome remarks over to you sir bismillahir rahmanir rahim honorable chief guest admiral mohammad asif sandila Air Chief Marshal Clean Sadat, President Kers, respected speakers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. It is my profound pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar, which has been organized by NIMA, primarily to create awareness. of geopolitical geopolitical happenings in the region and their impact on the maritime security and economic growth opportunities in the littoral states of the indian ocean region we are particularly indebted to honorable admiral asif sandila for sparing his valuable time to join us as chief guest ladies and gentlemen the national institute of maritime affairs was established in 2007 under the name national center for maritime policy research at karachi under the direction of government of pakistan the role and functions of the center were gradually broadened from mere academic oriented activities to more focused applied research resulting in tangible policy recommendations with the expanding role and function the institute was accordingly renamed as national institute of maritime affairs short title nima comprising two center one each at islamabad and karachi with mutually complementing roles apart from being associated with baria university nima is also an integral part of maritime center of excellence headquartered at pakistan navy war college lahore the mission of nima is to be a national think tank acting as a repository of maritime information with major focus on applied research for comprehensive solutions for pakistan's maritime issues advocating best maritime practices raising awareness and capacity building and publishing research of highest international standards in addition nima continue to establish linkages with relevant stakeholders at all tiers nima also provides assistance and research based input to relevant federal and provincial ministries and various maritime stakeholders to achieve our goals we carry out various research based activities such as publishing flagship research reports for mapping in depth analysis of various core issues and subject of maritime sector of pakistan holding international maritime conferences national and international seminar focus talk and maritime discourses in addition to that nima brings out an annual research journal and a monthly news digest all this is a humble endeavor for promoting maritime sector of pakistan and our road to develop it on the concept of blue economy as for today's subject i will leave it to my director to introduce the subject and then to our expert speakers who i am sure would enlighten enlighten us better on this topic of evolving iran china relations including regional and global perspective and shed light over the potential perspective and possible implications for pakistan to help pakistan's regional maritime dynamics be understood and explained better to the academia and strategists alike i once again ladies and gentlemen would like to thank you all and welcome the chief guest all worthy speakers as well as the participants for their time and interest in this webinar and look forward for a rewarding discourse i thank you all Ladies and gentlemen, I am Commodore Retired Babur Bilal, acting as moderator for this webinar. And before I hand over, ask and request my worthy speakers to talk, let me give you uh, the background of this topic. 
with China, Iran, emerging maritime cooperations and opportunities for Pakistan. In next 10 minutes or so, I shall be uh, covering this uh, background from the geostrategic and environment perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that China is pursuing an ambitious program to connect Asia with Africa and Europe via land and maritime networks along six corridors with the aim of improving regional integration, increasing trade and stimulating economic growth. Pakistan CPEC is a flagship project of DRI, which will facilitate China to ingress Indian Ocean via land railway route to Pakistan. Gwadar port is the main jewel of the town of CPEC and destined to play a critical role in developing Pakistan's economy. Lately, China has inked worth US dollar 400 billion of 25 years long-term contracts with Iran with our westerly neighbor and will modernize Iranian railroad, ports, 5G networks and telecommunications. In return, China would get discounted supplies of Iranian oil, product and gas for next 25 years. China would be able to make Iran part of its Belt and Road Initiative and will be able to establish free trade zones in Iran, in Macau, in the Northwest, Abadan near Iraq and Kushim, an island in the Gulf. Report also indicates that agreement would give China access to Jas, a major Iranian port outside the state of Homs. Pact is designed to focus on fighting drugs, terrorism, human trafficking, and cross-border crimes, but in practice, inevitably enhancing Iran's capability to deal with its Arab neighbors and the US, United States. We know that. Having been cut off from the West by sanctions, Iran has engaged in a look East economic strategy. China has been a major beneficiary. China may be developing a new Silk Road strategy in which Iran plays an important role. On the other hand, China and Pakistan have a long history of deep friendship. However, to China-Pakistan economic corridor, their bilateral ties have seen an upsurge and this development has also created prospects for other regional countries to benefit from this connectivity. This new development of China-Iran relations will have direct effect on Pakistan-Iran, Pakistan-China relations. Thus, need was felt for a careful analysis at our end. Today's city will endeavor to focus on the same with specific interest in maritime cooperation between Iran and China and opportunities rising for Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2016, India and Iran signed an agreement to invest in Iran's strategic Chabahar port and to construct the railway connecting the southeastern port city of Chahaba to eastern city of Zahidan and to link India to landlocked Afghanistan and Central Asia. Iran now accuses India of delaying the investment under US pressure and has dismissed India from this project. Trump administration's maximum pressure, pressure policy towards Iran pushed many countries like India and Japan to cut off the trading ties with Tehran. While Iranian officers uh, have refused to link India's removal from the Chaban Zaidan project to new 25 years deals with China, it seems that India, India's close ties to Washington led to this decision. However, Chinese involvement in Iran has pushed India out of the equation and China has become the dominant external player in Iran's economy. China is now Iran's largest trade partner, its largest oil purchaser, its largest foreign investor. Iran holds great geostrategic significance for China. Iran is also one of the Chinese largest oil providers, but also a key potential energy transport hub between the Middle East Central Asia and Europe. Regardless of what Washington thinks, the new China-Iran relationship will ultimately undermine India's interest in the region, particularly if Pakistan gets on board. Presence of China on our western borders will certainly help in easing out tensions between Pakistan and Iran, limit the role of Indian ingress in our Balochistan to Iran, and possibility of maritime cooperation between Pakistan and Iran to further boost our economic relations. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is also pertinent to mention that China now has a chance to connect Chaba to Gwadar port in Pakistan, which is a critical hub in BRI program. The implementation of Iran's proposal to expand the existing China-Pakistan economic corridor along northern, western, and southern axis and link Gwadar port in Pakistan to Cha Bahar and, to, and then to Europe and then to Central Asia through Iran by rail network is now more probable. If that plan proceeds, the golden ring consisting of China, Pakistan, Iran, Russia and Turkey will turn into centerpiece of BRI, linking China to Iran and onward to Central Asia, Caspian Sea and into Mediterranean Sea through Iraq and Syria. While analyzing maritime environment of Persian Gulf and North Arabian Sea, we can see a greater focus on the development of two strategic ports of Jas and Chah Bahar. Iran is attempting to shift its geostrategic focus from the Gulf, Persian Gulf to the Gulf of Oman. This would allow Tehran to avoid the tense Persian Gulf region, reduce the journey distance for oil tankers shipping Iranian oil, and also enable Tehran to close the state of Homer's when needed. While China will be able to add just to its network of strategic hubs in the region. According to this plan, regional industrial parks developed by Chinese companies in some Persian Gulf countries will link up to the ports where China has a strong presence. This interconnected networks of industrial parks and ports can further challenge the United States dominant position in the region surrounding the strategically vital state of Hummus. Here question arises, how Pakistan can exploit the developing scenario in her interest? First of all, future of Gwadar and Chabahar port. Chabahar is not a very far from Pakistani port of Gwadar. Pakistan has a desire that the two ports of Gwadar and Chabahar should not be rival but rise like sister ports. The two ports should complement each other in promoting trade in the region by enhancing connectivity through rail, roads, and shipping links. The trade cooperation between Gwadar and Chahwar would open economic prospects and job opportunities for both the countries. In the past also, both Chinese and Iranian leadership has also indicated the willingness to work together to join hands in the operation of Gwadar and Chahwar ports. We also note that Gwadar port is destined to more than 400 million tons of Chinese cargo in future for which Gwadar port may need additional at least 20 to 25 berths. Shortage of berth in Gwadar can be addressed through operations from Chabahar also. Similarly, Chabahar will be also connected to Afghanistan and Central Asian republics in next five to seven years. This can help Pakistani exporters to use Chabahar for their import and exports to those countries. Pakistan is sole dependent on Persian Gulf for import of oil and gas. In case of any restriction or instability inside Persian Gulf, Pakistan will face critical vulnerability to import vital cargo. Even if cargo is available, then Pakistan may have to pay additional war research charge in view of connecting Gwadar and Chabar ports and that too under Chinese influence. Risk management for Pakistan in such eventuality will be easy. Pakistan and Iran have age-old religious tourism relations. Both countries can boost religious tourism by investing in common shipping lines. Similarly, China, Pakistan and Iran can always join hands in launching shipping lines to handle their combined import and exports. This will be a win-win situation for all the parties. In the security arena, both Pakistan and Iran will be able to jointly handle the peacetime security challenges like illegal trade, human, narcotics, and arms smuggling. Although Pakistan and Iran have already decided their maritime boundaries, but fishing violations are common in the area. The same can be addressed under common arrangements. Last but not the least, destiny of both Pakistan and Iran depends on how well these countries exploit their maritime potentials. History is a witness to the fact that nations which ignored the development of maritime potentials were wiped out from the face of our and maritime powers replace them. Furthermore, it is also a fact that no nation can single-handedly address their maritime challenges. It is thus need of the art that Pakistan and Iran should join hands in maritime fields and get the benefit being visualized of BRI projects of China. Ladies and gentlemen, 
In the end, I hope that today's proceeding will provide a roadmap for Pakistan, China and Iran maritime relations in the present geostrategic and geoeconomic environments. I once again thank our chief guest, Air Chief Marshal Kaleem Sadar, and honorable panelists, and all the worthy uh, attendees for sparing their valuable time to share their thought on the subject. Before I hand over mic to our first panelist, I may remind once again that we have allocated separate time for combined question and answers. It is therefore all attendees are requested to write the questions in the allocated box and wait for the control during the question answers for raising the question. With this, I come to end of my introductory talk and invite Ambassador Azaz and Choudhury, Director General, Institute of Strategic Studies, Islamabad, to share insight on genesis of China-Iran strategic partnership prospects of Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Azaz and Choudhury, sir, over to you now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you so much, uh, Commodore Bilal. We, I am very pleased to acknowledge uh, the invitation by Nima and in particular Vice Admiral Abdul Aleem, the DG of Nima. I'm very happy that Pakistan Navy Bahria University have together created this important uh, research arm for themselves because while the bulk of um, action has shifted to hybrid warfare, uh, the kinetic uh, aspect still would be actively seen in the maritime domain. So it's extremely important uh, for us to understand what the dynamics are as part of the overall evolving situation. Let me start um, with the bigger picture. It was in December 2017. Uh, I was in the United States then. And the United States government launched what is called National Security Strategy 2017. They do that quite regularly. But what distinguished that particular document that year was that it called for the first time that the top priority for the United States, hence on, will be major power competition and not counterterrorism. This was a clean break that they announced. And only a month later, then Pentagon announced its national defense strategy, which built on this major power competition. Now, that was the announcement happening then, but a lot of work had already started. When 9-11 happened and we saw President George W. Bush saying that there'll be 100 years war, clearly, uh, uh, that didn't prove to be true because uh, the world is changing so rapidly, so rapidly. Four decades ago, we were thick in the, uh, in the Cold War. Three decades ago, Cold War ended and globalization euphoria started. Two decades ago, counterterrorism emerged as the topmost priority. And a decade ago, the United States started shifting its priority or pivot, as they called it, towards Asia. And it was already building up. And the literature started appearing in the United States that China uh, will be the major competitor. Uh, Donald Trump even used the word rival at that time uh, of the United States. So we can see in just a span of three years, less than three years, US, China are now firmly locked in a great power competition. China probably would have preferred to wait. However, the US appeared keen to contain China before it becomes uncatchable. Now this competition has spilled over into maritime domain as well. The United States uh, followed up its uh, Asia pivot policy with Indo-Pacific strategy making the two, is, two oceans essentially as one big theater, uh, a kind of arc, maritime arc around China. It also mobilized ASEAN nations in different claims in the South China Sea. 
through which bulk of the Chinese trade passes. The United States then re revived Quad with some hiccups, but it is now pretty much uh, uh, moving. An arrangement between United States, India, Australia, and Japan to keep the sea lines of communications open. In fact, the very word free and independent, uh, uh, free and open uh, Indo Pacific, FOIP, was coined by Japanese, outgoing Japanese Prime Minister Abe in 2005, uh, whose primary purpose at that time was to keep the sea lines open. Uh, so we can see that the United States has now created a, a considerable infrastructure uh, of containment of, uh, for containment of China. Uh, the US Navy is still the largest but China is catching up. The US uh, Defense Department's annual report says that PLA Navy has over 300 surface combatants, submarines, amphibious ships, patrol crafts, and so on. So the challenge that the Pentagon has defined for itself is how to contain China from deploying a global Navy. The theater of maritime context course, is Indo-Pacific region now. For China, the South China Sea and the Malacca problem necessitate looking for alternatives. CPAC provided one such alternative. It is in that context that Pakistan's CPAC becomes most relevant for China for its strategic access to Indian Ocean. Of course, China is already investing in other ports in the Indian Ocean. And if you recall, uh, about five years ago, it opened its first overseas military base in Djibouti, which got the US immensely worried. The overall China-Iran cooperation should therefore be seen in this broader geopolitical contest that has started between the United States and China. But let's first review the facts of the Sino-Iran cooperation. Your title of the program says Genesis of China-Iran Strategic Cooperation. Now, uh, my own appreciation is slightly different. First, the deal has not yet been concluded, in my view. It was reported that during a state visit to Iran in 2016, President Xi had proposed a comprehensive deal to forge a long-term strategic partnership between Iran and China. But ever since we have seen that the Iranian parliament has not yet discussed or approved it, we've also seen that Iranian Foreign Minister Jawad Zarif has confirmed that deal is there, but it says that it's still being negotiated. And on the Chinese side, there is total quietness uh, about the terms of the deal. But somehow, somewhere, the in 18-page document leaked out to New York Times was published, in which it uh, gave some details of this package, calling it a $400 billion package that uh, Chinese will invest in energy, infrastructure projects, uh, closer defense cooperation, intelligence sharing, and in exchange, Iran will give discounted or even the regular oil supplies to China for 25 years. China would also invest probably, according to this report, in banking, telecommunications, ports, railways, etc. So I would call it still a work in progress. However, this proposed deal has radiated significant signals which must be read and evaluated in terms of implications for the region. And that's why I think that this particular webinar is relevant. There's no doubt that China and Iran have been moving towards each other. 
and the present proposed deal is only consolidating the growing china sino iran cooperation already as uh, commodore bilal said uh, that uh, in trade and investment china is uh, and iran are already cooperating extensively now why is iran so interested in promoting its cooperation with china of course it is uh, easy to tell because iran is locked in its conflict with the us for the past four decades and also with the arab gulf states across the persian gulf so iran is looking for reliable partners its attempts to co-opt india in my view have not worked as india is ever more closely aligned with the us and tehran's recent vocal stance over kashmir has also started to diffuse the warmth between new delhi and iran for iran the two best options are to have china and pakistan as its close friends and strategic partners if possible with china as i said indicate efforts have been made since 2016 for a closer partnership the deal when it finally comes out would expand chinese presence in iran's economy and uh, will play a major role for iran this is also a signal to the united states that we have allies that we are not alone and that we are exploring options to bypass china uh, us sanctions against iran so iran also would get a long term buyer for its oil in the form of china but more notably there is a proposed defense cooperation also and be staged in this deal through joint trainings joint exercises joint research weapon development and intelligence sharing so clearly it's a formidable signal that iran has tried to send out to the united states its arch rival for the last four decades what is there in it for china i think we need to think about that also for china the deal has is, is certainly a strategic dimension first of all it is in tandem with the bri theme bri the belt and road initiative theme of regional connectivity china is expanding its economic footprint in eurasian landmass even in africa even in latin america and therefore investments in iran will not will be in line with its bri's regional connectivity policy further the military dimension of this cooperation of course has caught the us attention so in a way china has also signaled to the us which is now treating china as its major rival china has proposed again reportedly i am not too sure about it has proposed building several ports in iran especially at jusk in the strait of hormuz which means that it will have unencumbered access to one of the major choke points of oil supply in world in the world how is the us looking at this deal or proposed deal for the united states this deal has the potential to become a massive long term strategic partner partnership between two rivals of the united states the united states has maintained a heavy presence in the gulf waters and the indian ocean at large and the entire middle east for years so the emerging sino iran partnership could could fluster the united states as china has already built numerous ports along the indian ocean so for the us it, this development is certainly a matter of grave concern and particularly um, as it comes at a time when the united states is moving uh, in a transition phase of uh, elections its economy has suffered massively from covid-19 yet not come out of it there are racial tensions uh, within united states because of donald trump's policies 
and there is a serious internal political divide within the uh, country. What does it mean for Pakistan? So Pakistan, this partnership offers a complex menu of opportunities and challenges. One major strategic advantage to Pakistan would be that China's involvement in Iran would reduce the Indian footprint in Iran or Indian threat to Pakistan through Iran. Remember the Iranian, uh, the Indian spy uh, Kulbashan Jadev had come from the Iranian port of Chabahar under a fake identity. Uh, so we think that uh, regional projects involving China, Iran, and Pakistan could naturally leave India out of the loop while weakening its regional influence. The Iran-China bond could also open up new opportunities for Pakistan to deal with the political and security threats that it faces in the region, especially in Balochistan where Indians have increased their subversive activity, most of which through Afghanistan. So China-Iran cooperation would also facilitate Pakistan-Iran border management and lessen security threats, as well as keep illicit trade uh, and drug trafficking in check. The framework has also opened up avenues for Iran to come out of the economic crunch and reap benefits from the BRI and strengthen its ties with its neighbors and provide them with the much needed comfort level. With BRI's development projects in Iranian Balochistan and in Pakistani Balochistan, Iran and Pakistan could also cooperate in, economic, in better socioeconomic conditions in their border provinces. Iran has also been keen to join Chabahar with Gawadar as sister and complementary ports. In fact, I have heard personally President Rouhani at least twice uh, uh, express this desire. So the China-Iran cooperation would lessen the possibility of a competitive environment or atmosphere between Gawadar and Chabahar ports as China would emerge as a cohesive force between the two. This could also be followed if it goes through through rail connectivity for movement of heavy cargo. There could also be possibilities of reinitiating the Iran-Pakistan gas pipeline project with Chinese, some Chinese companies on board. But mind you, all this has two reality checks. One is the US sanctions, which are present and which are a very serious impediment for anyone, any commercial entity to engage with China, uh, with, the, with Iran. The second is, of course, Saudi Arabia factor, which too has its friends, including Pakistan. While I do recognize that there could be possibilities of Chinese finding way around the sanctions, by establishing banking channels uh, that do not necessarily depend uh, uh, on the dollar transactions. There could be also localized arrangement for dealing in yuan. I don't know. They might be exploring. But they will have to find a way to go around the US sanctions. I would also say that on balance, the development of cooperative related partnership between China and Iran could open up opportunities for Pakistan. However, at this stage, this is more in the realm of messaging and signaling. At the same time, Pakistan should be circumspect of the geopolitical realities involved as close allies like Saudi Arabia would be wary of such a close partnership. Further, the United States is well in its position to pre pressurize Pakistan and employ all kinds of economic and financial coercion in retaliation should Pakistan enter into this partnership. At the end of the day, we would need to weigh the pros and cons and take a decision on how to benefit from the China-Pakistan, China-Iran partnership as it unfolds. But when I heard, heard Commodore 
Bilal, I noticed that it appears that we have already made up our mind that there is a golden ring and there's an alignment which is emerging, China, Pakistan, Iran, Russia, Turkey, and that it is in our interest. I would caution against hasty conclusions. Alignments are risky prepositions, ladies and gentlemen. You would recall that 40 years ago when the United States and Soviet Union, the two major powers of that time, were in contest in Afghanistan and we entered, we ended up actually in the vortex of that conflict. So tomorrow if US China were to have a major contest of different sorts, Pakistan should not end up in that vortex again. So if you side with one, you automatically make the other as enemy. The beauty of our present times is that the world is also moving into what is called issue-based alliances. On any one issue, you can be a friend of one country and on another issue, you can be a rival or a contestant or a competitor of that country. Therefore, I would say that Pakistan should weigh its options, should uh, see what benefits it from any alignment that emerges, including China-Iran partnership, but simply not give up its options to have friendly relations with countries like Saudi Arabia, which have stood with Pakistan for a long, long time. Even, even China would not like to offend them because bulk of Chinese oil also comes from uh, from its, uh, the Arab neighbors, uh, Arab uh, members of the Gulf. So I would recommend uh, that while we see how this alignment, this emerging strategic partnership between China and Iran helps Pakistan, we keep all our options open. I would end here and thank you very much uh, uh, to Nima for providing me this opportunity to share my thoughts. God bless you all. Thank you, sir, uh, uh, Azad, sir, for educating us on an important aspects of China-Iran strategic partnership and uh, especially uh, covering the aspects of the geostrategic environment at the global level. Indeed, your vision and appreciation of the geostrategic environment has set the stage for our webinar. Now I move to our second uh, panelist, uh, Vice Admiral Retired Asaf Amayu. He will be sharing thoughts about the Gwadar and Shah Bahar assist ports, challenges, and opportunities. Uh, Admiral Asamayi, sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share my screen with you first, okay? Okay, sir. Aamzu billahi mere shaitwani rajeem, bismillahi rahmani rahim. Admiral Mohammad Asif Sandila, Nishane Imtiaz Military, Air Chief Marshal Kaleem Saadat, Nishane Imtiaz Military, Vice Admiral Abdul Aleem, Director General Nima, Honorable Members of the Panel and Respected Audience, Assalamu Alaikum. I am privileged to be a member of this distinguished panel and I thank Nima for this opportunity. It is noteworthy that unlike me, the other two panelists are renowned experts in their fields. I say this because I have neither visited Jabahar and Gawadar also I visited about 10 years ago. The topic in front of us has witnessed many geopolitical ups and downs in recent years. Several of these have been explained by Ambassador Azachar. I will not go into security and military dimension of the topic of the theme of the webinar and I will concentrate on economic and the I would say marine not maritime marine aspects of the topic. Gawadar and Chabahar as sister ports manifestly make geoeconomic sense but it faces many geopolitical challenges. My presentation today
my presentation today will be under following headings <clears throat> background there is long precedence of iran pakistan economic cooperation a land transit point near gawadar at gaz kum on pak iran border has been operative for a long time gaz is at the western end of the coastal highway and nlc plans to establish a border terminal here iran has provided 100 megawatts of electricity to gawadar and other coastal areas in baluchistan since 1999 this has been vital for developing gawadar port as the only source of electricity a preferential trade agreement exists between the two countries since 2006 the trade between the two countries stood at 1.3 billion dollars in 2008 and 9 but has sharply reduced due to sanctions iran enjoys a trade surplus with pakistan a review of pta and a possible free trade agreement could not take place in 2020 due to covid 19 Chabahar port is older as its development started in 1983 whereas construction of Gawadar port started in 2002 India and Iran agreed in 2003 to develop the Chabahar port it will be correct to say that India's interest in Chabahar port started after the beginning of construction of the Gawadar port and is mostly for strategic strategic advantages against pakistan and china both iran and pakistan have officially stated that chabahar and gawadar are sister ports and complement each other in promoting future trade transit and connectivity our foreign office has stated on numerous occasions we will continue to work with iran for deepening connectivity between the two ports inaugurating chabahar port Iranian president Hassan Rouhani said he looked forward to more engagement and unity in the region explaining we should go after positive competition we welcome other ports in the region we welcome gawadar's development the week starting 11 July 2020 saw a paradigm shift new york times reported that iran had agreed to proceed with a chinese offer of 400 billion dollars in investments over 25 years after deliberating for 4 years iran would join the belt and road initiative bri iran will provide oil to china worth 280 billion dollars and china will invest 120 billion dollars in nearly 100 projects in iran including a refinery near chabahar and a port at just on the western extremity of the gulf of oman the deal is yet to be finalized by both countries on 14 july 2020 iran announced that it will complete the chabahar zahedar rail using its resources and set aside india's participation in this important project many in india think that iran has backstepped in india the indian sphere that works in chabahar port will also go to china however india is not giving up and is still trying to influence tehran on 17 july 2020 pakistan's foreign minister stated that the inclusion of iran in cpac will benefit the entire region so in brief a perceptive willingness exists to make a success of gawadar chabahar sister ports by china iran and pakistan let us look at chabahar port in detail as its capacity and plans are not so well known in pakistan chabahar is iran's closest and best access point to the indian ocean it is about 100 nautical miles west of gawadar the nearest military cantonment and an international airport is 
is uh, at Onak. Jabahar port was conceived in the 70s and in the and in the 80s its development was spurred by the Iran Iraq war however in the last two de decades sanctions on Iran affected its progress currently Jabahar port complex consists of two ports Shahid Kalantri port and Shahid Behishti port Shahid Kalantri port is a small vessel port whereas the vision of Shahid Behisti port development is to transform it into a multimodal and fourth generation port. Hence it can play as a regional hub. The development of this port has resulted in huge amount of creation of uh, back areas this area is uh, alone is about 70 hectares and this area is about 130 hectares so it's a huge huge uh, project the vision of Shahid Behisti port development is to transform it into a multimodal and fourth generation port hence it can play as a regional hub port in May 2015 India and Iran concluded an MOU for development of phase one of Shahid Behisti port. Next year, Afghanistan, India and Iran signed a trilateral tri transit agreement for using port of Chabahar. Initially, the Indians invested $85 million. India developed two berths and terminals. This phase of development of Shahid Behisti port was inaugurated in December 2017. As you can see, there are no ship to shore container trains due to what? Sanctions. President Trump reimposed sanctions on Iran in August 2018, but after three months exempted Chabahar, citing its crucial link for the sustenance of Afghanistan. This was the state of jetties in 2018. I put question marks against 16 meter depth and 14 meter depth because this will be the eventual depth. Currently, it may be less. In 2018 December, Iran handed over cargo handling and marketing to the government-owned India Ports Global Limited for 10 years. Mind you, this uh, agreement is, is still holds. However, IPGL is yet to find a full-time contractor and the de facto contractor is still the Iranian company Kaveh Port and Marine Services. The port's capacity has increased from 2.1 million tons a year in 2015 to 8.5 million tons in 2018. This progress took place while the sanctions on Iran were relaxed. Currently, the, Anglo the handled cargo volume is less than 2 million tons. After completion of plan, planned phases of expansion, the annual port capacity will increase to 85 million tons a year. 4.4 kilometers of jetties for container ships and multi-purpose cargo will be added. Iran created a free trade zone in Chabar in 1992. The Iranian government decided to include the Chabahar port area in the FTZ in 2020. Now about Gawadar port, briefly. Most of the audience is aware of the status of the Gawadar port and the Gawadar Special Economic Zone. COPHC PHC has a lease of the port for 43 years and a tax holiday for 23 years. The phase two development of Gawadar was launched in 2016 and, uh, and ultimately Gawadar will have up to 100 berths and depth of 20 meters. The phase two is going to build 3.2 kilometer long uh, jetties here. Ultimately it is planned to have three 
single point moorings for offloading gas and oil also. So, Gawadar has greater potential for development. It also faces no sanctions. Let's talk about economic opportunities for the two ports. Jabahar port has similar geoeconomic and geostrategic potential as Gawadar port, albeit it faces greater geopolitical hurdles. Jabahar is located both in north-south and east-west transit corridors and can play a transit gateway as well as central com commercial node between CIS countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Russia, Europe, the Indian Ocean littoral states and China's Belt and Road Initiative. Gawada, on the other hand, offers the shortest direct transit to southwestern China. Similarly, Chabahar offers the shortest route to Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Russia. It also <clears throat> offers the direct route to Turkmenistan and the Caspian Sea. So it is in the interest of both countries to e use each other's transportation networks. A rail, rail connection between Gawadar and Chabahar will be the cheapest way to provide Gawadar with rail connectivity. Please see. The Chabahar Zahedan Railway on the map that Iran plans to complete in 2022. Zahedan is already connected to Pakistan. Chabahar is the main port for the export of fish, which is mostly caught by Pakistani fishermen. Efficient transportation between the two ports will curb this smuggling. Both ports have large spatial and free trade zones. Iran has invited all the regional countries, including Pakistan, to invest in Chabahar's FTZ. These trading manufacturing areas can synergize each other. These zones will add momentum to the development of North-South Transit Corridor, CPAC, and consequently international trade in the region. If Pakistan-Iran gas pipeline is completed, it will provide a relatively inexpensive source of energy. Iran is now fully backing BRI and CPAC. In July 2020, Iran's ambassador to Pakistan, Sayyid Mohammad Ali Husseini, said the BRI and CPAC were beneficial for the regional development, particularly for China, Iran, and Pakistan. To underline their interest, the Iranians have stated in a brochure of Chabahar port, the Chabahar offers secured and economic trade route to Afghanistan, Gawadar offers the same, Provi proximity to the industrial area in southwestern China, Chabahar evolving into third and fourth generation ports, which is same for Gawadar, and that Gawadar offers proximity to the industrial area in southwestern China, and its capability for attracting transit cargoes of Central Asia and flourishing short sea shipping between Chabahar and Kawala ports. So large economic benefits will accrue in deepening a relationship between the two ports. However, Pakistan would be mindful that energy costs in Iran will always be less. Pakistan will have to compete based on variety and superiority of its products and services. In my view, the main challenges are, and some of them are repetition of what uh, Ambassador Azaz Chaudhary also stated in his um, uh, discourse. India has been involved in Chabar port since 2003. She has used this lever for subversion against Pakistan and claiming the insurgency in Pakistan. This was amply highlighted by Kulbushan Yadev episode who was operating from Chabahar. Iran has noted Pakistan's concerns in this regard. India also uses her presence in Chabahar port to keep an eye on China's moves in the Arabian Sea. It also wants to thwart the progress and vitality of the Gawadar port. India wants to use Chabar Afghanistan access to undermine Pakistan Afghanistan strategic and economic linkages. Coming to United States, the United States has sanctioned Iran again in 2018. These sanctions have constrained Pakistan's all commercial relations 
with Iran. Pakistan is economically dependent on multilateral agencies and does not have much regal room for bypassing U.S. sanctions. Things may change after the U.S. elections in November 2020. The U.S. considers both China and Iran as military threats. U.S. also voiced opposition to CPAC. Pakistan faces a huge challenge in balancing its relationship with the United States vis-a-vis -vis Iran. The Arab states consider Iran as an enemy. They view any progress in Pakistan relations with suspicion and hostility. Shah Bahar Dawadar cooperation will draw ire of our Arab friends in the Gulf. The state of security in Afghanistan is a challenge. Iran anyway mistrusts the Taliban. Although peace talks have started, our experience is that it will take several years before the real peace can return to Afghanistan. The security situation in Afghanistan not only affects its transport routes, but also impinges on the economic growth in the neighborhood. Both Gawadar and Chabar have faced terrorist threats in the recent past. So both countries must focus to thwart internal threats. Among the challenges, we cannot overlook the attempts at subversion through social media and hybrid warfare. Opportunities. The broad contours of opportunities are Pakistan should forestall any conflict. Focus on developing economic, political, and military strengths. The economy must be the centerpiece for uplifting the people. We need to figure out our strategy to work in the face of sanctions on Iran. Follow a proactive policy to strengthen relationships with Iran, Turkey, Afghanistan, and Central Asian states. Specifically, Pakistan should use China-Iran cooperation to manage the Indian presence in the Chabahar port. Deepen the chabahar Gawadar sister port relationship through economic cooperation, frequent visits and encouragement of businessmen. Upgrade Gubt Kum border crossing and make it a model border crossing. Pursue gawadar chabahar rail link. Negotiate multimodal transport agreements with Iran Use land routes through Iran for trade with Russia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and even beyond. Participate in each other's free trade and special economic zones. Finally, avoid our typical lethargy and make the best use of opportunities as they occur. The international um, geopolitical arena is very dynamic and we need to use the opportunities as they occur. Gawadar, CPAC, and VRI are opportunities for Pakistan that will shape our future in this century. Gawadar, Chabahar, sister port relationship faces big challenges. However, many concrete opportunities are available that can result in a win-win partnership. Sanctions against Iran are the main hurdle. At the same time, a new international alignment is emerging. On one side is the U.S. leading Israel and the Arab countries and on the other are its opponents, China, Iran, and Russia. India, though in the U.S. camp, will act according to her national interests. Pakistan must oversee this environment while safeguarding our national interests. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edmund, sir. Uh, indeed, Pakistan and Iran both have ample opportunities now for cooperation, especially in maritime economic fields. We also understand that it is in interest of both countries to overcome minor hurdles in united the resources of both port ports, especially under the Chinese arrangements to act as a single maritime hub. This cooperation will certainly have far-reaching uh, geostrategic effects, as already explained by Ambassador Azad, and both at the regional and global level. I once again thank you for sharing your thoughts. Now I move to the third speaker. Our third speaker is Captain Retired Hassan Daud Bhatt, and he will be sharing his expertise on the subject 
partnership prospects for Pakistan, China, and Iran Belt and Road Initiative. Over to you, Captain. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, first of all, let me acknowledge the effort of NEMA, its leadership, and the management for arranging a subject. Uh, which is important at this time and age, and also it gives us direction for our future cooperation with both the countries. But before I start, sir, can you hear me clearly? Yes, you are loud and clear. Okay. Uh, the disadvantage for being last as a speaker is that most of the points that you would like to highlight uh, are covered by eminent speakers before you. But the biggest advantage is that you can tailor your presentation and talk based on what has been highlighted earlier and give it the kind of uh, you know, change that it requires at this time. So for me, uh, you know, I, I, th I think we live in strange time, but the most important aspect is that geopolitics is fast being overtaken by geoeconomics. Some of uh, worthy speakers uh, here and also uh, participants may not agree to what I'm going to say in the next 10 minutes. But this is my opinion based on the discussion I had during the two Belt and Road Forum, both in 2017 and 2019 with the Chinese experts and also the Iranian experts and leadership that was participated. And this is also based on the discussion uh, which we had with the Chinese colleagues when we were uh, you know, crafting the CPAC long-term plan in terms of regional cooperation, which is going to be of immense importance in the second phase of CPAC and moving forward from there. So with these preliminary remarks, I would like to highlight some facts and some assumptions, which for me are more important than any other aspect in terms of relations with any country or any uh, corridor. The first assumption that I would like to highlight is that I do not see that in next 50 year, any country can replace China as the factory of the world. And any country in Asia or ASEAN and in the region that we belong to will have economic relevance unless it has relevance with China. And look at ASEAN's growth, economic growth, and also look at their uh, disputes, uh, territorial disputes with China. For us, Iran and Pakistan, we do not have any dispute with, with China. And also, I think China is a stable partner for Pakistan and Iran. I also would agree to uh, what uh, His Excellency Ambassador Izaz said about uh, issue-based alliances. So I would like to highlight some issues coming, stemming out from these assumptions and then would uh, speak on how this uh, partnership, what part this partnership offers to Pakistan in terms of uh, the larger canvas of Belt and Road Initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan is going to be 100 year old in less than 30 years. As we speak, our population is 221 million and that of Iran is much lesser. Our per mile uh, you know, human activity is far more than Iran. But the good part for Pakistan is that our median age is 22 years and their median age is around 32 years. The other good aspect for Pakistan is that we have lesser urbanization as compared to Iran. And perhaps over the last few decades, our infrastructure has grown. Yes, not to the expectations uh, that we all uh, want, but still it has, you know, grown to a level. Whereas in Iran, they require especially urban regeneration and uh, because of this fast urbanization, 
development of their urban infrastructure. So with this in mind, we see that BRI offers a lot of opportunities, both in terms of policy coordination, infrastructure connectivity, unimpeded trade, financial integration, and connecting people to people. And all these aspects actually are the solution to most of the problems that we have. We are now looking at special economic zones within CPAC in the second phase of uh, um, uh, its second phase with early harvest projects completed. But even as we speak today, Gawadar gets 100 megawatt of energy from Iran. So that for that particular Lesbela district, you can imagine the importance of Iran and the electricity that it exports. And the potential is huge. It's about 3,000 megawatt that they uh, have been offering uh, during di different discussions. I would also like to highlight, and it's important for us to highlight, Mr. Hasil Basinjo, who was one of the invitees for the inauguration of Chabahar Code. And we, I had a formal discussion uh, with him in terms of CPEC prior his departure, late uh, uh, Minister, Minister for Maritime Affairs then. And the kind of protocol that he got during that reception, uh, and after he came back, he, he, you know, we exchanged notes in terms of how CPEC, because we were working on the long-term plan then. I mean, he was immensely impressed by the infrastructure that was there in the city. But as far as port is concerned, I think Gawadar port has as of now and based on the future projections and the, uh, and the de Gawada development plan that I was lucky enough to be part of, offers more to the region in terms of transshipment and logistics hub. Our number of ports would be far more than uh, what would be for Chabar once it is completed and the depth of the port naturally is, would be more. So now coming to the discussion that I had during the Belt and Road Initiative and also uh, during uh, the briefing for third party participation within the framework of CPAC with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all the other key stakeholders. So Pakistan at this point of time is looking for investors and partners to invest in Pakistan in its SECs. And for that, I think any friendly country is invited to come and invest. And I speak, I, I'll be selfish to speak that they are more than welcome to invest in, cha, in, uh, in our special economic zone because uh, we are working on various uh, economic zones, both uh, in, um, in Khyber Bakhmukha in the newly merged district. And we offer a lot of opportunities for our partners, uh, not just in, in the maritime domain, but also um, in through these SECs, which are located um, in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, in Sindh, and in Punjab. But I think this Belt and Road construction, uh, in, in terms of its notion of promoting economic, political, cultural, social, and ecological uh, development, offers more to countries like Pakistan and Iran because of our borders uh, and proximity to, to China. And because of the possibility of trade with uh, Central Asian Republic uh, with that. And that is precisely the reason that in the long-term plan of CPAC and in the third phase of ML1, there is a rail connection between uh, Gawadar and Zaidan so that, you know, the, the, uh, the trade activity and also uh, tourism, the religious tourism could be promoted. So, uh, uh, and similarly, between the rural urban synergy that we are developing and also the north-south and east-west road network that is being developed, not just through CPEC, but also through PSDP, we are looking at connections with our, with our border uh, countries, both Afghanistan and Iran, and therefore, in Afghanistan, we are opening new uh, border crossing and also uh, new border crossings uh, are being considered because this is also one of the factor uh, of the World Bank uh, ease of doing business. And this is one of the key areas where the leadership of both countries are keen uh, and have always emphasized on the need for enhancing trade linkages uh, between the two countries because the volume of trade as we speak is much lesser than is the expectation. 
so through belt and road in initiative both iran and uh, pakistan can not just develop their infrastructure but also work on building the capacity of their human resource we have spoken about the the possible uh, you know uh, mou that has surfaced uh, and some of the aspects of this for me the most interesting was the 5g being provided or probably uh, would be considered for uh, cooperation and that would enhance the, the level of connectivity between iran and rest of the world and also if we move towards that direction although we have optical fiber connectivity from uh, from our northern border with china to to all the way to gwadar in three phases and first phase is completed till pindi but i think we should also look at the possibilities in near future in terms of uh, having 5g in pakistan and based on that because you know the fourth industrial revolution is knocking at our door much faster than what is expected and i think at this point china can offers the kind of ability that we requires in terms of e-commerce and also in terms of uh, connectivity optical connectivity that no other country not neither they offer and nor they have the potential to provide so i i think we should when when we looking at that uh cooperation uh, 50 year cooperation that iran and china is is working on we should look at it in a in a way that we can improve our cooperation with with china and also craft the next phase of our china pakistan economic corridor based on the lesson that we learned uh, uh between uh, you know the cooperation that is happening between uh, iran and china and china and rest of the country i think uh, at this point china is transforming from a you know participant to a shaper of globalization although at this time uh, we see that because of covid uh, there there is a negative response against uh, globalization but i think this regional integration and globalization can take people out of poverty in countries like pakistan and iran much faster and on a similar pattern that has happened in in china and uh, i was i was listening to premier li keqiang during his work report for last year and his future cooperation for 2020 and beyond i think china is opening more for the outside world and their investment uh, beyond borders would would increase and i think pakistan and iran based on their own national and economic interests can work together for creating an environment where this regional integration creates the kind of uh, connection that is required for connecting to the global supply chains of china and then benefiting from their through their existing networks Uh, that are there in terms of yeah, their reshaping of the eurasian integration and um, you know consolidating the support from surrounding areas and providing trade and investment facilities through deepening of economic and technological cooperation so we know our issues in terms of the large population in pakistan and the growing population in iran the thirst for having new technologies and embracing the fourth industrial revolution and in, and you know the potential that it offers in terms of e-commerce and especially the episode uh, of covid has actually demonstrated because i was part of the task force for industries at khyber pakhtunkhwa and you know immediately we realized that there is there is a huge potential for pakistan to grow its partnership in e-commerce and also in agriculture so in next phase as uh, as cpec is now coined as one corridor with many door doors i i think both countries uh, iran and pakistan can look at cooperation not just in infrastructure and technology and beyond that in the socio economic development of the country we can while we do not emulate chinese model we can take pertinent lessons from their economic growth in less than 30 years they've taken 
100 million people out of poverty and every second uh, two people uh, move up the ladder and the economic